So uh, thank you for resisting the urge to leave after lunch and staying. Um, this is a collaborative work with Kim Whedon and Mary Newhart from Cornell University. And um, we've heard a lot about gender inequality and the factors that affect gender inequality here. And I'm going to talk about another one. So in the US, like many other industrial societies, uh, the workforce uh, or the labor division in the workplace is expressed with, uh, with a division to occupations, right? Teachers, lawyers, nurses, and so forth. Now these bundles of occupations, are, or these occupations are not only bundles of work tasks, but they are also associated with social identity and different, differential access to economic and non-economic rewards. Now, in an ideal world in which we do not have any gender um, inequality, we would expect that 48% of all workers in each occupation would be women, because 48% of all paid workers today in the US are women. However, this sort of hypothetical uh, scenario is very far off reality. <clears throat> in reality, men and women typically end up at very different occupations. Uh, this chart shows you the percent of women in different occupational groups. So here we group together occupations. Um, and what you can see is that there's wide variation, actually. Uh, varies from less than 4% of workers in crafts are women to 73% in clerical occupations are women. So there's wide variation. Now, when we study uh, occupational segregation, we are trying to quantify, one way of quantifying the extent of occupational segregation is by using the index of dissimilarity that basically express the percentage of men or women that would have to switch occupations in order for complete gender integration to be achieved. Um, and this is in 2016. In 2016, 49% of all women or men would have to switch occupations to a non-gender type occupation in order for full integration to be achieved. So this is half of women would have to switch or a quarter of men or a quarter of women in order for integration to be achieved. Uh, now to put this number in context, like what does this number mean to us, right? We need to sort of compare it to previous trends to understand, well, are we at least on the path to integration? How far are we off from there? Um, or basically asking, is integration decreasing? So in this graph, what you can see, the y-axis is the index of dissimilarity or the share of men or women that would have to switch occupations in order for integration to be fully achieved. Right? So integration is achieved at zero. Right. So, A, we're very far off. But when we look over the years, what we see is different kind of rates of change in occupational segregation, and it is declining over time. So between 1950s and 1970s, actually segregation has increased a little bit um, by about five percentage points. But between the 70s and the, the 90s, segregation decreased uh, relatively uh, qu quite a lot by about 13 percentage points dropping from somewhere between 65 to 52%. But after the 1990s, what we see is a decline in the um, uh, decrease in segregation or the trends towards integration. And between 1990 and now, we only decreased in segregation decreased by only three percentage points. So segregation has relatively stalled. Now, this trends, when we look this, this trends vary quite substantially by race groups. Um, and as you can see, for example, segregation among Asians um, have decreased much more. But the same kind of stall that we see post-1990 has kind of uh, been across the board. So segregation is decreasing, but very slowly. Right? So the question is, how long will it take us to kind of understand why I'm calling it slowly? We ask, well, how long will it take us to integrate? Right? At this rate, how long will it take us to integrate? And we can think about two scenarios. One is, let's assume, right? Yes, <laughs> let's assume that the rate of decrease in segregation or the rate of integration is going to continue at the same rate as it has 
since the 2000s, right? It is not a far-fetched assumption. In this case, we are going to reach integration, yay, in 320 years, right? But if we assume, but even if we take a more optimistic scenario in which we take the, the post-1970 rate of integration of, of decrease in segregation, we would still take, it would still take us 150 years to close the gap, right? To achieve full integration. One of the reasons why segregation is this, uh, is this slow to close is, bit, is because integration occurs asymmetrically. Okay? Women enter male occupations, but men do not enter women occupations. One of the reasons for that right, is that, women, uh, that uh, female occupations are, uh, less, are paid less, um, have lower wages, and so they provide less incentive to actually, for men to enter those occupations. Okay, so I think that so far I showed that segregation is quite extensive. It is also persistent, right? We see that segregation is persistent. It is slow to change. But what are the consequences of this um, segregation, of these patterns, right? Um, so segregation is in and of itself, of course, an indicator of inequality, but it's also a key factor in other forms of inequality, including the gender wage gap. And one of the reasons for that is that there is a negative correlation between the percent of women in an occupation and the uh, wages, or the median wages in this occupation. And what you see here, the y-axis is the correlation, right, ranging from minus one to one. And so everything below zero suggests that more women in those occupations are um, uh, the, the lower the wages in these occupations. Everything above the line, which you see rarely exists, um, suggests that more women are in an occupation are also associated with higher wages in that occupation. I should add, these are the, major, the same major groups that I showed earlier, and the correlation is among the detailed occupation within those groups. So, <clears throat> When we look in 2016, um, a college-educated white woman with an average years of education, or an average years of experience, sorry, uh, her predicted hourly wage was about 10% lower than that of her male peer with similar attributes. When we control for occupational, for occupations, for men and women tendency to end up in different occupations, this gap decreased by about 18%. So that means that 18% of the gap that is net out of differences, of human capital differences, is associated with occupational segregation. Another important point is that this share, this 18%, is actually higher than what is, naturally, what is traditionally attributed to a human factor, uh, human capital factors like education and experience. So it follows that if segregation, if occupational segregation would decrease, so would the gender wage gap. Now this is true, however, we do, it, it is important to note that um, there are other pool factors, basically, or, or factors that attenuate this, this trend, um, and basically the, the, the wage gap between female-dominated occupations and male-dominated occupations have increased over time, so that attenuates a little bit the impact of the decrease in segregation. So occupational segregation is extensive, it is persistent, and it is highly consequential for the gender gap in, for the, the gender wage gap. Now the question is, of course, what can be done? Uh, now I don't have good answers for that. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I may have some suggestions, but not very good answers for that. Um, but what is very clear is that any sort of, is that, is that any effort to try and address the gender wage gap should not net out 
occupational segregation, right? So if we take Silicon Valley, we cannot kind of net out the fact that we cannot only look at the gender wage gap within occupations, right, among uh, computer engineers and say, okay, this is closing. We also need to address the fact that women are not entering those occupations to begin with if we truly want to close this gap. So any attempt to try and do this should take into account the factors that contribute to women's under, uh, to, to men and women tendency to enter different occupations in order to close this gap. And uh, if you want, if you have any further questions, please contact Kim, or you can contact me too, but <laughs> she's the main driver here, so.